Okay, in this next section, we're going to be covering Juniper routing policy. Now, routing policy determines which traffic will be allowed to go in and out of the routing table. And it's going to be doing this by using import policies and export policies to either accept or reject routes and send these routes on to neighbours that are running different dynamic routing protocols. Now, the important thing to remember is that every protocol has a default import and export policy. I'm going to add these to the screen here, but an import policy determines how routes are placed into the routing table, whereas an export policy denotes how active routes are taken from the routing table and passed on to a neighbouring router that's running a dynamic routing protocol. And it's important to remember that each um, protocol has its own default policy. Like here, we're going to be using static routes and OSPF. And here we can see that if we don't use a then statement, the default action for an OSPF export policy is to reject all routes. So just to get a basic overview of what's happening is routing policies are composed of groups of terms in order. And these terms are basically if from and then actions. So I know that's a lot of theory to take in at the beginning, but we're going to go and jump on the actual command line and have a look at that in more detail. And, and this is the topology that I'm going to be working with. You see that you have R1, R2 directly connected. R2 is connected to R3, which will act as our internet router. And it, as you can see, it has plenty of prefixes on the other end for us to mess around and tinker with to see what we could do in regards to routing policy. And R1 and R2 are running OSPF. Now, R2 and R3 have static routes between each other. So R2 could get to all of these prefixes and R3 can get back through its own static route but R1 has no visibility of any of the routes outside of OSPF. So let's jump on and have a look at R1. Let me just do a show route. And here you can see when I do a show route, as I said, R1 doesn't have any access to those prefixes. And if I do a show OSPF neighbor, we can see that it has a neighborship with R2. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to jump onto R2 because R2 is what will be running the routing policy and taking the static routes and placing them into OSPF. And the way that we're going to do this, if I just run onto R2 and I say edit policy options. Now, the first thing that I could do, you saw that if I go back, actually, if I say run show route. And you can see that there are plenty of routes here that R2 has access to, plenty of static routes. So if I just choose one at random, let's choose this one, 100.1.1.2. And I put that into a routing policy to be advertised. Actually, before I do that, let me say edit. Yeah, I will do that. Edit policy options, prefix list. And I'm going to call this prefix list 100 root, just like this. So we've made a prefix list. And now we say set and the prefix, what it is, it's 100.1.1.2 slash 32. That is now our prefix list has been set. Now, if we come out of the prefix list hierarchy, back into edit policy options, and we say edit policy statement, we're going to call it test one. And then I could say something like set term. Now this term could either be numerical or name. I'm going to use numbers, but you could use a name here. So set term zero. Now here is where we should actually define a from or a to statement. Um, I'm only going to be doing export policies. So um, I probably won't do the to statement here. It's probably out of scope for this, but you've got to realize that if there's a term and it doesn't have any from or to statements, then all routes are considered to match. So due to that theory, if I don't put a from here, and if I just say then accept, all of the loopback routes should be available to R1 because there's no from statement. That means all routes are considered to match. And then the last thing is to actually do that export in um, OSPF itself. So edit, top edit, protocols, OSPF. We're going to set our export policy and it's called test 
one. If we were to commit this now, all of those routes should be available here on R1. Yeah, so let's go on to R2. Let's say commit. Go on to R1. And you can see that all of the routes are available to R1 and they are actually pingable. 100.1.1.1. Yeah. So by omitting the from statement, every route has been passed in. Let's jump back onto R2 and do add the actual prefix list. So top, edit, policy options, policy statement was called test1. We're going to term 0. We're going to edit term 0. Now what we're going to do is set from prefix list and we called it 100 root. Okay, so what I'm expecting now is here we've got the first term. We said from previous list 100, we're going to accept that, but we don't have any other terms for it to reference. So we go back to the default export policy behavior for OSPF, which says reject all. So I'm expecting only this 100.1.1.2 root to be available in R1's routing table. But R1 may not actually have reachability to that because R1 cannot ping the 142.18.0.0 network. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add that network to our prefix list just to give R1 reachability. If I say up three, ah, that's too many. So edit policy options for our prefix list which was called 100 root. I'm going to set 142.18.0.0 slash 29 network as well. This probably it's set prefix. Oh, I added an extra dot. That was what it is. All right. I think. Yeah, all it is is that I put a dot here. All right, if I commit all of that. Guys, I have a request from you. If you're enjoying the free content, I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June. But I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you wanna know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. Now the export is already there on the OSPF. So if I now run onto VMX1, if I do a show route, I'm expecting only to see those two routes, which I do. So I've got 100.1.1.2 and reachability to that network, which is outside of the OSPF area. So now I should be able to ping 100.1.1.2, ping 100.1.1.2, which I can. Okay, excellent. So we've covered if a term doesn't have a from or a to statement, we've covered prefix lists, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to cover root filters. So if we jump back onto R2, and I'm gonna put on the screen here, the root filter statements. So with root filters, you could have exact. Now, this exact means that it's going to cover the exact IP address specified. We'll have a look at that. Then we could have a root filter of or longer. This means that from the host all the way to the last host in the range that is specified, this will have reachability. Then you have longer, which is as above, but not including the first host, so everything after and including. Then you have up to, all the IP addresses from a specified IP address up to an end one. And then you have prefix length range, which will give you, as it says, prefixes. So you would put like, we'll have a look at that one actually. So I will do like a slash all slash 24s included or all slash 32s included, something like this. So we'll have a look at exact, We'll have a or longer and we'll have a look at the prefix length range right now. Okay, so let's jump back onto our routing policy. If I say up, edit, policy options, test one. Let's do a show on that and see what we're actually looking at. So from term one, from prefix list, 100 root, then accept. And you can see in our prefix list, We've got 100.1.1.2, 100 
and 142.18.0.0/29. If we didn't want to actually use a prefix list, as I said, we could use a root filter. So let me say edit term zero, and I will say delete from prefix list. Maybe that's all I need. No, I need to actually say the prefix list. So prefix list 100 root. You can see that we've deleted those. The other way that I could do this, I could say for term one, set from root filter 100.1.1. Let's use a different one just to show that um, it's different. 32 and then we'll put the exact keyword on the end. And we'll also set from root filter 142.18.0.0 slash 29. And which one do I want to use? I'll probably use or longer, which will be from the host all the way to the last host in the range. So this is a slash 29, which will give us eight addresses. So it will be from 142.18.0.0 all the way to 142.18.0.7 that will be allowed which is good for us. So let's say all longer, excellent. And then I'll say set, then accept. Let's commit that. So I'm expecting in R1's routing table, we will have the 142.18.0.0 slash 29 root, and also the 100.1.1.4 slash 32 root, and we should have reachability. Let's have a look at that. And it's exactly as we said. Let's ping 100.1.1.4. Excellent. So we've gone through the exact, which is an exact IP address that we're looking for. We've gone through the or longer. The other one that I want to cover is the prefix length range. So we saw on R3, if we do a show interface terse, and we're looking for the loopback addresses, say that we wanted to just allow these ones. We can see that they all have a slash 24. So we only want to allow any prefixes being redistributed into OSPF only if they've got a slash 24 mask. So let's jump back onto R2. And again, we're going to edit our policy. So anything under term zero, I'm just gonna say delete. That will delete everything. Yes, I wanna delete everything under this level. And what I want to say is we're going to set from our root filter, everything, 0, .0, 0.0.0, oh, I think I can just do 0 slash 0, oh, come on, 0 slash 0, that covers everything, but it's only going to have a prefix length range of slash 24. Ah, I also need to allow the slash 29, otherwise we won't have reachability to the 142.18 dot zero network so if i put now dash dash slash 29 so anything that's got a slash 24 and anything's got a slash 29 that will omit all of our 100.1.1.0 networks out so we shouldn't see any of those in r1's routing table and then we have to do a set then accept show compare you see the roots that it's taking out and it's adding this root filter of everything that has a slash 24 all the way up to everything that has a slash 29. Let's commit that. Running back over to R1's routing table, show root. And it's worked exactly as we said. We've got the 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 network, 20, 30, and also for reachability, we have the 142.18.0.0 slash 29 network. Last thing to do is just verify reachability through a ping. Ping 10.10.10.10, 20.20.20.20, and 30.30.30.30. .30 All right, guys, I hope we've learned something on this one, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, but before that, we have question time. Question one. How are routing policies composed? Question two, 
What is the basic representation of the group of terms in a routing policy? Question 3. What is the difference between the longer root filter suffix and the or longer suffix? Question 4. What root filter suffix allows you to specify a start and end point for a range? Question 5. What is the default behaviour if there is no from statement included with the term, but there is a then accept? 